Will you welcome, please, Emma Chapman? I like to get lost in my instrument and play off of what I've just played. It's like, as we're talking here, if I were to analyze each word I'm saying, I'd never get through a single sentence. You, you play off the intervals between the words. And that's exactly, exactly what I do in music. I try to do that. I'm grabbing from what I've just played to an interval, and the interval is a physical shape or a distance between the hands and the, the shapes are uniform and constant because of the uniform tuning. So I'm trying to go into a trance. I'm trying to develop a basic systematic technique and then get lost in it. So it's, it's trying for both, both of those things. In, intuitive and a sound basic technique with the fingering. Thank you. 
I played guitar and I went through a lot of changes on guitar, different numbers of strings and different ways of picking it and uh, picking the strings and uh, springs and levers and gadgets of all kinds. And, and one day, in just an instant, in August 1969, I started playing with my right hand tapping on the strings and immediately said, okay, I'll play the chords I already know in my left hand and uh, squeeze them, tap them. And I could do it. I could do it immediately. And I had been listening to jazz piano players and to Jimi Hendrix. And I could drum my fingers on the, on the board and play some very fast, fluent lines, which are very easy to play when the action is low. So uh, what I did then is I turned my guitar up right away. I, I moved it up more vertically, about 30 degrees from the vertical. And uh, played so that my fingers of both hands aligned perpendicular to the strings and into the fret spaces, as any fingerboard player does when he plays a stringed fretted instrument. His fingers lock in between the frets so that he can play do, re, mi on one string, fa, sol, la on the next string, play three or four notes per string. And uh, this, this way of playing with two hands in a, in a fingering, four-fingering, full Tech, fingered technique is what I contributed and what had never been done before to my knowledge. It had never been done. There were some um, old timers uh, uh, that played in the 40s and early 50s when electric guitar first came out who were playing two-handed tapping. There were two or three of those fellows. And they played with their um, right hand per parallel to the strings and their left hand was perpendicular to the strings. So their right hand was still in a picking position, and they held their guitar in their lap like a Spanish guitar. And therefore, their fingers lined up all on one fret space. So if you were to play four, uh, four three-fingered techniques, you'd be playing in the tuning of the instruments, fourth, 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 rather than scale notes. So what they did was they would poke and slide and walk with a couple fingers. So what I did in just an instant was, was new for stringed instruments and was that percussive technique. And um, so I took a week off and rebuilt my guitar, brought the action down low, brought the pickups up close. I already had a guitar with a long neck and a wider neck and it had nine strings on it. So I was in good shape to play this technique.
the musical possibilities was like more than the sum total of both hands playing. It, if you have a bass, play, bass part and a guitar part, well, almost any bass player and guitar player should be able to do it better than you. But if you, if you unite and coalesce them together and you play with a different attitude about it, perhaps more like a keyboard with both hands, you get more than the sum total. You, you produce music that a bass player and guitar player could not produce together. Um, a new way of playing any instrument is bound to produce new music, especially if you're an in improvising musician, which I am and always was, uh, because you respond to whatever effects you have on your pedal board, to whatever your fingers are doing, and it changes all of your ideas. So for me, it was like an instrumental technique that was like a catapult, and I totally changed character when I started playing two hands. There are about 2,000 active stick players. They're all doing their own kind of music. A lot of them will just bring their music into a group and use it to play a bass part, chord sweeteners. Others will do their college homework on it. Some have even declared a major using the instrument. Uh, there's been some ambitious projects for making uh, um, three staff lines and special uh, tablature and notation for the stick. A lot of stick players who want to play by the written notation will use a regular keyboard approach, bass and treble clef. Um, there hasn't been anything outstandingly new on that. Um, it pretty much applies to written notation, but written notation is for keyboard. It's for sh an instrument with sharps and flats. And a fingerboard is a grid. It's a grid of fourths, if you tune them all in fourths, which a guitar almost is. And it's a grid in semitones, or chromatic half steps. And so you can play by distance between the hands, distance between the fingers on each hand. You can play by those relationships. And uh, that's the way I play. And if somebody asks me what chord I'm playing, I have to actually look down. I look at the three lowest bass strings, see which one I'm playing, and the rest is a numbers game for me. So the approaches are varied. There's a lot of jazz rock fusion being played, and, and a lot of them are head arrangements, not written arrangements at all.
Thank you.